Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. Today we are returning to a top recommendation that many of you made quite some time ago. That is Chris Stapleton at Austin City Limits in 2018 performing I Was Wrong. This album won a Grammy, and it also won Album of the Year at the CMA Awards. So I know it's going to be good, but I think it's going to be extra delightful because Chris Stapleton's voice has never failed to give me shivers. Let's get to it. I'm going to go back to the beginning and talk about all of these amazing moments in great detail, but I want to point out two things in particular to listen for. First of all, listen for the amazing twang and focus he's able to put on the sound. He has a rough, full-throated sound that he creates back here, but then he focuses it so far forward. It has so much piercing, cut capability, very extraordinary in the sound. And then... On top of that, I want you to listen for how he's set these lyrics. The way he spaces certain words out very intentionally is just fantastic writing. He is an incredible writer. So let's go back to the beginning and go again. So just in that very first uh, first phrase, you have those two things I mentioned. About, uh, there's a, the twang on thinking about it's, oh man, it is so far forward focused in the mask. Sometimes singers will talk about the mask and we're referring to this front area of the face where if you focus the sound here, you tend to get sort of sympathetic vibrations and a certain drive and cut with the resonance. It can help enhance the sound quality essentially by utilizing some of those frontal face bones. So he's able to focus that sound so well, probably has a little soft palate drop as well to really get into some nasal resonance there too. And then you can listen to the way he says words, thoughtless words, as if those words before were thoughtless, but now he's thinking twice in that space between about what he said. Oh, it's such a great opening phrase. I really dig the way that that rhythm that he set up um, of having that pause before the last word in many phrases, it continues to set apart that last word and have extra thoughts that go around it. Like 
there's a hesitation or maybe a person should think many times about that last word. Very, very successful songwriting. And the way that he's able to continually stay in this pocket is fantastic. As he's moving through different ranges, different vowels, there are times when he'll pull it in just a little bit, but it never fails to have this almost brassy ring of focus in that twang. It's really quite, quite astonishing. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh giggles um I, the way he has that focus in the twang and then when he goes up he brings an extra grit to it it's just such a cool combination of sounds i really really like it and then his runs in there are fantastic really great pitch throughout like very specific but at the same time they sound really smooth. It kind of reminds me a little bit of some of the smoothness of Anderson Pox stuff, actually. It's, it's really, it's so cool. I have like twang and grit and soulful and fast runs and smoothness all combined in one, and it's delightful. Oh, oh, also, the I, when he goes up to I, and that diphthong from an A to an E, essentially, the way it goes into the twang in his mask is so good. <laughs> Right there, ooh! <laughs> I think it's so interesting that um, people say he's country. I know he, he's in Nashville writing a lot of country songs there. Um, but to me, it, this is such a bluesy side of country, right? This is more country blues, even has a lot of rock elements in it. Um, I guess country is just such a diverse genre. You have lots of different things in the same way that metal is such a diverse genre too that I've learned about. The A couple of things in here that really caught me it sounds like a very, very bluesy solo. And there's a pitch bend in here that is really cool. He does a pitch bend. I think that it's a, at least a whole step that goes up and down. It's almost like a, almost like a little triller ornament in a classical piece. Right there. <laughs> like it really. That's a really awesome um, and daring ornamentation to use, I think. <laughs> oh, giggle, again. <laughs> mm. I like the rhythmic aspect he added there too. He's so good at singing, he's so good at writing, so good at playing. He's just, he's a really fantastic musician and performer. I love the build in here, the way he built uh, with 
repetition, um, the way the musicians helped build into that as well, and then built in, in pitch going higher up, and then built with more distortion entering the sound too. Like There were so many elements that helped this um, growth develop into a very satisfying uh, a climactic sound as they got to, I think, a, a chorus here. Very, very nicely done. <laughs> <laughs> it almost sounds like like the vocal folds are fraying there, but they're not, right? It's totally possible to add distortion like this in a way that doesn't destroy the voice. So it's just really cool to hear it enter his voice almost in the same way I've heard it enter a metal vocalist's voice as the passion and emotion rises. It's a, oh, what a cool expression. It's a great film. And it's really obvious how effective that build was because of the way the audience screams afterwards. Just if you're thinking about writing a song, go back and study how that build was done and copy that in your own music, in your own style. This was really, really well done. And you can tell immediately from that audience, woo, right afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> the diphthong usage in that run was awesome. Come back again. <laughs> so, um, diphthong, uh, if you're not aware of this term already, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you might know it. But a uh, diphthong is essentially when you take two vowel sounds and you put them into one sound. In this case, it's in baby. In the middle uh, syllable of baby, bay, it's a diphthong, it's a, so it's an e and an e, essentially bay. <laughs> Uh, and you can shift that around depending on dialect too, by the way. So when you put that kind of diphthong into a run, uh, into a run, you can essentially go between the different vowels as you're moving between different notes, and that can clarify your pitches. It helps our you're essentially distinguish between all of those different pitches. So you get be ye 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 be essentially. <laughs> he does that in here really well. <laughs> <laughs> and he's even playing with the diphthong and wrong, 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 <laughs> and adding one that wasn't even there in the first place. <laughs> and I love the way he shakes his head as he's going through it. He's so into this run and it's so good. That's not the end, is it? Yeah, keep going. Okay, good. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh man, the 
that anticipation and that single note repetition build up was, it's great. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I this solo section, I love the way he's using a repetition in it to the point where you almost feel like, come on, break from the repetition, but it also is so good that you want it to keep going at the same time. Oh, really brilliant, brilliant composition there. Oh. <laughs> It's bending. Oh. <laughs> Whoa, there are so many amazing things he's doing in the solo right now. And one of the things that I love about it is it's not crazy complicated. He's taken a lot of simple elements and made them so good together. And it's almost like he's taken a deep dive into certain simplicity to the point where he explores how good that is. Things like just repeating one note or one phrase and repeating it until you feel antsy for the next moment is really good, playing with dynamics in there too. And then in this moment here that just happened, he picked a phrase that fell outside of the time signature for a bit and the drummer uh, pulled in with him here until it felt like we almost lost an idea of where that 4-4 four, four time signature was happening. And it's really, it's really cool how they're exploring small snippets to riff on. <laughs> That's wild. Wow. I'm gonna go back just a little bit and catch that end again. He's being very specific about uh, pitch bend moments. And I think that a lot of this has translated into his vocals as well. The way he's so specific about his pitch when he's singing and then, then we'll bend the pitch in his voice too. It's like, it's like playing an instrument really helps you sing better. Hmm, truth. <laughs> Right, right in there, there was a really cool, just slight pitch bend. It's so cool, like just little tiny details. Uh, uh. Whoa. <laughs> Sorry, right, right in there was another one of those very slight pitch bends that it, 
he almost breezes through. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. Nice. Okay. He is the entire package, both an extraordinary vocalist, extraordinary composer, and extraordinary player, too. Wow. No wonder this album won a Grammy. It's just incredible. I love the exercise of picking simple things, but doing them so dang well that they become addictive. He's extremely, extremely good. If you want some more analysis of him or you just can't get enough of him, kind of like me, here is an entire playlist of some Chris Stapleton songs that I've analyzed before. I hope I see you over there and thank you so much for your recommendations. See you soon.